In today's video, we're going to show you exactly why real estate agents choose to sell property by the way of auction and the tactics you need to be aware of to avoid big mistakes step by step. So keep watching. Josh and Nathan Vecchio here, mortgage brokers with Hunter Galloway, the home for home buyers across Australia. And in this video, we're gonna walk you through our six tactics real estate agents use to sell properties at auction. In fact, it was by understanding these very tactics at play, which helped one of our customers save over three weeks in waiting for a property going to auction, which was ultimately a property that was never gonna be within their budget. So keep watching. And remember to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest things property and finance. One, time pressure. Make no mistake, auctions are created to achieve record prices. They're for the benefit of the seller, not you, the buyer. And the real estate agent's tool of choice is that of time. Whilst it's intangible, it's deployed to create a perception that if you don't act now, you're gonna miss out. Time being the gatekeeper to all good decisions. And if given enough time of it, will ultimately allow you never to make the wrong step. Without it, could be likened to deciding on the flip of a coin. Yeah, it's a phenomenon known as fear of missing out, or FOMO. And it's so powerful. Just look at John Farnham and how many last shows he had, or even carpet companies, and how many times they've had going out of business sales. The first step is to understand time pressure and to take two steps away from it. Think about property as you would a bus stop. In waiting for the bus, you know not all is lost if one is missed, as there's just another one around the corner. Sure, it might take 10 minutes to wait, but not all is lost and you haven't missed out. Like a bus, remind yourself of this and don't be pressured into making a quick decision. Time pressure is a key tactic used in the auction process it's used to the advantage of the seller's interest. Therefore, by knowing this, you can prepare your defense against it. And stick around because in our four step, we're gonna uncover the secret term agents use to have you think that you're gonna get an absolute steal for the property. And we're gonna discuss how to avoid falling for, the, for this trap. So keep watching. Two, unconditional offers only. Note that all auction offers aren't subject to anything, not building and pest, not finance, not due diligence. You buy it without having the ability to make this a subject. Therefore, to bid with confidence, you'll need to invest upfront. And the trouble is you won't even know if you're the successful bidder. Think about it this way. If you're selling a property that has a few bits and bumps, the one where you bid it, you bought it, AKA auction, or the other, which allows time for the buyer to do their searches, Think about what they're doing and have the ability to crash the contract if the building and pest isn't to their liking, AKA private treaty. Well, the answer is obvious. When it comes down to it, we'd all do the same thing. So the seller isn't a bad person for doing this, but it's by knowing this, which gives you the chance. And as my university lecturer once said, to put the rear protection in. So if you're gonna go to auction, due diligence is a huge must. As if you're the successful bidder, won't have the ability to exit the contract. From council approval searches to inspections, I personally wouldn't leave anything to the imagination. Leave no stone unturned, and whilst it will cost you a fair amount of money, the only other way is to take a big gamble on probably one of the most expensive purchases you'll ever make in your lifetime. Three, sunk costs. It's because the property is unconditional and that to bid diligently, you'll need to pay to play and therefore it creates you a sunk cost. Sunk cost theory essentially stipulates that by having the skin in the game, that is money or even time, that it creates a tendency to continue even if the path is destructive. Yeah, there's actually studies that prove this theory where two groups of participants watch three movies back to back. The one who stayed are those who paid for the privilege. Whereas those that left early, the ones that received the tickets for free. And it's by knowing this which allows you to avoid being trapped by this theory. So if in the progression of your searches you find that there are issues with the property, be prepared to walk away. The best way to do this is to try to create yourself a separation from the money being spent and the activities associated with the property itself. Four, greed. It was at one stage in my mortgage broking career 
I would work from the real estate agent's office one or two days a week. Because of this, I was regularly a part of their training sessions. And it was in this particular office they were primarily focused on auctions. In these meetings, a phrase which they commonly use was known as feed the greed. The trainer would say this over and over again, saying that you've got to feed the greed. Essentially, the agents are referring to you, the buyer, your disposition. It's done well when you believe that you'll pick up a property for nothing. Think of it as mental judo. The agents are looking to use your own energy against yourself. They'll do this by having you think that the property will be sold no matter what. And whatever your budget, you're in with a big chance. Like the great Jim Rowan once said, you need to stand guard at the door of your own mind. So that you're not feeding yourself the greed, here's a few questions you'll wanna ask yourself. The first question is, is what I've been told by the agent too good to be true? The next one, if I were the seller, how much would I want for the property? And the final question you want to ask yourself is, how do I know what I've been told is true? And what's more likely the situation? If you do your research correctly, you'll know how much the property is worth. Knowing that the whole point of the auction is to get record prices, you can safely assume the sale price will be within 10% of that figure. So if the predicted sale price from a property website like Realaz says that the property would sell for 700,000, you can safely assume that the owner is looking to sell the property from anywhere from seven to $770,000. It's through this research and it's by understanding the fundamentals of why auctions are performed, you can then make a decision as to whether it's worth spending any more time on the property. Remember that if you miss out on this one, like a bus stop, there's always another one just around the corner. So never allow yourself to feel the pressure of FOMO. Five, how the auction sales process works for the agent. So now we've covered the four reasons agents choose to sell at auction. Let's now understand the three phases of the auction process. The first phase is called the pre-auction. It's a phase in which the agent is looking for two things and they want to accomplish this. First is to present all offers on the property. The goal here is for the real estate agent to educate the seller on what the market's willing to pay for the property. Oftentimes, buyers can have their hopes raised and dash in this process. It's because at this stage, the real estate agent is looking for all offers, no matter how low, because the agent's looking to condition the seller to understand that the property is worth less than their expectations. And it's very common for sellers to have unrealistic expectations as to what they believe their properties were. The second thing they're looking to achieve is to encourage anyone and everyone who's interested in the property to turn up at auction. It's here where a lot of buyers get the false sense of reality. Real estate agents aren't allowed to give price guides by law for auctions. So it's common for agents to ask what your budget is. No matter what you say, they'll reply that the owners want it sold and it's worth attending the auction. I've seen this firsthand. We've had one of our customers with a budget of $600,000 go to an auction, which ultimately sold for $900,000. A successful auction is created with buzz. And the only way you get this is by having a horde of people attend the auction. Understanding this helps guard yourself from having these tactics used against you. Now we're at the second phase of the auction process. And this is where the actual auction takes place and is where the show actually begins. A well-orchestrated auction creates competition and scarcity. It's here where the pressure is dialed up and where split moment decisions are made. If you're looking to go to auction, be prepared with both your bidding limit and strategy. For your strategy, are you gonna go hard and fast or are you gonna wait until the end moment to make your bid? If it's your first time going to an auction, it's generally best to hire a buyer's agent or for someone with a lot of experience to help you through this process as there are so many mistakes you can make. The final part of the three phase process is post auction. This is where the property goes on the market under private treaty and can be sold via negotiations. Six, buyer beware. And if you're looking to go to auction, it's really important in understanding that they're not designed in any way, shape or form for you, the buyer's benefit. They're run for the sole purpose of getting the highest and most competitive offer. And it does this by two ways, that of competition and scarcity. It's worth noting that banks are no longer offering auction ready pre-approvals. Part of this is because of the amount the banks were spending on valuations. Having five people auction ready, but there can only be one who wins. It's easy to see why the banks no longer offer these types of pre-approvals. And even if you are pre-approved, know that it's not a promise. 
So entering into an auction does come with its risks and important, you discuss these, which pertain to you in detail with either your solicitor and or bank or broker. And finally, you can actually waste a lot of time and money on property going to auction, which you had no chance of winning. And therefore, you will wanna be aware of these tactics used. And there you have it. Now you know the auction process and all the tactics. So it's over to you. Are you looking to buy a place? Did you know here at Hunter Galloway, we help people across Australia? So whether you're looking to refinance, purchase, build, you're in good hands. Simply reach out and call us on 1300 088 065 or visit us online, huntergalloway.com.au. Thanks for watching and remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.